Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Voscoin YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Monero Random X hard fork. Simply put, Monero has hard forked, basically changing their mining algorithm, moving from Kryptonite R to Random X. Random X is a mining algorithm developed specifically, I didn't say that very well, specifically, or uh, CPU mining only. And then you rethink what you just thought and you realize maybe I don't need a 7742. It's pretty much what I did. This kicks out GPUs for the most part, as well as FPGAs, we're told, as well as ASIC miners, application specific integrated circuit miners. Secret ASIC miners have been dominating Monero hash privately for a long time now, and that is what really spurred Monero to start changing their mining algorithm time and time again. So without giving you guys the whole story again, basically that happened, they've gone through several mining algorithm iterations and now they've just recently moved to their most ambitious mining algorithm yet, Random X, CPUs only. So let's jump into today's video where I'm gonna show you how to mine Random X on Intel, as well as Ryzen. I'm gonna outline some of the top CPUs for this. I'm gonna go over the CPU mining profitability and just break it down for you guys. Long story short, CPU mining on Random X is very simple. Don't let it seem complicated or daunting. The customization can get a little advanced, but I'm gonna show you the basics to, at a minimum, get you up to, get you up to speed mining Monero Random X. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Today's video is brought to you by BitSonar. BitSonar is basically like a BitConnect without the BitConnect. <laughs> you can register and choose a suitable investment plan, pursue your primary goals or receiving everyday financial reports. By the way, this is not financial advice. I'm Doge Dad, not your dad. It's entertainment purposes only. Withdraw profits or reinvest them for exponential capital accumulation. That's a very uh, big claim right there. And then they have an echo fund right here where they're going to immediately add funds to common trading pools, neural network, coupled with a quantum algorithms, analyze global trends and make profitable trades every time there's a divergence in rates. Sounds like arbitrage. Systematically pays out profits through any convenient payment system. Monero XMR, one of the only cryptocurrency projects to ever stand up for miners. They're currently trading at about $54.5 or about 7,300,000 Satoshis, which looks like that. They're ranked 13 on CoinMarketCap by CoinMarketCap. Since they hard forked, we've had a slight increase in that BTC Satoshi valuation. The dollar amount has been pretty relative. Today, I'm gonna to show you again how to mine on uh, Ryzen CPUs as well as Intel CPUs and just kind of what goes into that. To start it off, I'm gonna show you the basically in detail complicated version. And if you're like, whoa, that's a little bit too much for me, I'm gonna show you like basically a one click way to get up to speed mining. This is my Intel 6700K CPU mining. Obviously, Monero Random X. And on board this PC, I have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that is clocked at 3000 megahertz. The best miner out for Random X right now is XM Rig. The latest version is 5.1.0. I'll link out to everything I talk about in this video in the video description below, right below me, as always. Links out to grab the latest version because probably the latest version will be better, but if it's giving you issues, use the version I use in the video and hopefully that gets you uh, running it up to speed. GCC and MSVC are basically different ways to compile this. Just run with the GCC if that's fine and works for you and depending on your Windows operating system. I've just got Windows Home here, 64-bit, so I went with Win64 because that's Windows 64-bit. Once you download it and extract it, you will be met with this file. However, okay, first curveball when it comes to this stuff is your browser's probably gonna say it's a virus, especially if you're using Chrome. I couldn't get to download in Chrome, so what did I do? I went to Firefox, Mozilla Firefox, I, which I also have on my computer, downloaded there, Firefox said, hey, this is a virus. I said, no, you just think it's a virus. So I click, right click it, allow download, and that fixes that issue. Also, depending on if you have any kind of antivirus, or even just the normal Windows antivirus, you need to deal with that and disable that so it does not quarantine your miner because if it does, it simply will not work. It quarantines the miner program. From there, 
you will need to edit your config file. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, I use Notepad++ to do this on this computer. You can try to use the Notepad or whatever other program you'd like. If you wanna just use Notepad++, it's free. But here's the kicker. If you want the super quick, easy way, you go to xmrig.com slash wizard, again, link out below. And from here, you can start a configuration. You can add a pool, you can put in a custom pool, or just go with something like support XMR. And then you're gonna put in your XMR wallet address. You can put a worker name in there if you'd like to. From there, you're gonna click add pool, and your pool will be added right there. From here, you can make additional adjustments if you should want or choose to do so. For example, I'm setting this up for CPU, which basically everyone is now. So you're just gonna leave it on CPU. From here, you can put your donation percentage. You can donate a good percent and be a, be a good guy, be a nice guy, or you can donate a lower percent. It's up to you. That's a choice you're gonna have to make. From there, you can grab your config file. You can literally just download it like so. Or what you can do is you can grab it as just a copy and paste. And like, for example, I'm remoting into my rig right now. So if I downloaded it, it would download to the computer I'm remoting in from. And from here, I can just take this and put the config in. And you, don't, you never wanna really save files while a program is running. So I'm gonna go ahead and X that out. Control save, that is now my config file. I'm gonna run this as administrator. I'm gonna explain that more here in a second. But as you can see, I put the config file in and you know that I went to uh, support XMR, right there. Looks like it didn't keep my donation at zero, I guess because I deleted everything so it was gonna repopulate that. But let's see if I close that out and all, all I did to find this donation piece, you know, very quickly, just control F, which is find. And then it's going to take me there and took me to the donate level. And from there, I'm going to edit that from five to zero, which is what I just did. And then I will restart the program and see. So after restarting it, the donation goes back up to 5%. So let's go back into the config file. So just change it to one. Let's see what happens. I guess maybe you can't run it at zero donation with the way this is set up. But as you can see, I just ran it at 1% and it's it's loading that. And oh, the reason I'm doing running as administrator, just kind of drive that in, is there's something called big pages or huge pages. And you'll see that this has 100% of huge pages allocated. There are a couple methods you can do to activate and implement huge pages. But the absolute easiest way is to simply run the program as administrator, right? And then exit out, restart your PC, and do it again. I don't even think you need to do it again. But just simply start mining again, and it, you should see huge pages at 100% instead of like zero out of four, which is what I believe it was at previously. I'll also have a links out to a couple guides to help you do this. There's huge pages, and then there's also large pages which news to me, they're different. So to get to your large pages, you're gonna to need to go to local group policy editor, editor. The quickest way to get there is GP edit and you know, enter and that'll take you there. From there you'll get here and then going down, you will be able to go all the way down to lock pages in memory, which you can see right here. From here you need to add your user to this location. Make sure that's in there proper and then you're set. Large pages is not required. Huge pages is not required, but these things will increase your hash rate. You can also start to overclock your RAM. That'll increase your hash rate if you do it right. Also, just having dual channel RAM running, basically you want more RAM in the correct slots. I believe it's two and four, but it may vary on your motherboard. In this rig, I've got RAM in all four slots, so I know I'm good to go when it comes to RAM on this setup. Again, I'm running a i7-6700K. This isn't a super high or impressive, you know, ground. This is not impressive of a hash rate on random X, but this is an Intel processor that's not that great at random X. It's also a processor that is older and, you know, wasn't too crazy to begin with. I, like I got it for like 300 bucks. I think when it came out, it was like four or $500 at the most, uh, which I mean, com you compare that to Ryzen CPUs that they would blow this away, but that's not the point. 
because Ryzen's awesome when it comes to CPUs. And Intel, they're getting, hand, they're getting it handed to them recently and they deserve it. But yeah, that's it. Just like that, you're up and running. This is my, pulling it up on the pool, just supportxmar.com. I put my address in, it takes me here. You can see my hashes, you can see my workers. That worker was originally called Ghost but I just changed it to YouTube. So Ghost is dropping off and YouTube is about to come online, you know, per the pool here. But that's not the point. The point is, is that it's registering poolside, which means we're mining properly, we're mining to our address and so forth. And just like that, it's that easy to get set up mining with your Intel CPU and doing everything else you need to do. Windows, random X, mining. If you're doing this on Linux, you probably won't really have to go through most of this stuff, uh, especially like the large pages and the huge pages and so forth. But yeah, now you know. If you want to get up mining Monero Random X even easier, okay? This isn't a shill or any of that kind of stuff. It's, it's just literally easy. Kudo Miner. And yes, I have a referral link in the video description below. I appreciate it when you guys use my links for that kind of stuff. But I swear I'm not telling you just because of that. Like it's, You open the program, you click it, and you start mining Monero Random X that easy. This hash rate could be several kilohash higher. I've seen, you know, multiple Ryzen 1700s, which is what I have, a Ryzen 7 1700, you know, mining when they're well tuned, like 5500 kilohashes or, you know, 5.5 kilohash a second or 5500 hashes a second. Again, my Intel CPU that I just showed you was mining at 2.2 kilohash a second, but they are very different. Uh, CPUs here. If you hit H, you can see your uh, hash rate readout also here. It's seriously that easy to start mining this stuff if you use a program like this. What are the downsides? They take a fee, but obviously they take a fee. They're doing stuff for you. And you, I'm telling you, you literally just click it and it'll go through a benchmarking phase and that's it. And it starts mining. Also, I really don't trust the total power usage here. For example, on my Intel CPU, uh, it's using about 70 watts. And to take that and then move it into what everyone always wants to talk about is profitability, right? So I've got this CPU, my Intel 6700, uh, mining at about, you know, two, like two and uh, two and a quarter uh, kilohash a second. My power consumption, when I start mining, bumps it up 70 watts, leaving that zero, even though it's not never the case and or unlikely the case and then my electric cost is 12 cents uh you know usd per kilowatt hour so oh man for all this work i'm making a nickel a day that's five cents usd if you don't know yeah yeah, hey, I'm supporting the network. I'm supporting the network. Yeah. And as you saw on, you know, Kudo Miner, they give you a readout of your monthly earning potential. And, you know, they're showing me a 12 USD. After my electric cost, it's probably going to be like half that if you want to look at the real numbers. This is a screenshot of my Intel CPU mining rig. And this is my, it was at about 94 watts, you know, without the mining taking place. And once I began mining, the uh, power consumption moved up to 168 watts. And that is that power increase I'm measuring where I'm getting the 70 is just simply that increase in power usage. Okay, so the computer was gonna use this regardless, even though technically you could say that this is costing me 168 watts to run. Because, I mean, it, it is. But if we want to look at just the raw mining part of it, then it's plus 70 watts if you know I was doing something else with it, I guess, which I'm not. So that doesn't even count for me. <laughs> but not the point, not the point, guys. To further elaborate on the topic of Monero Random X CPU mining profitability, uh, it, there really wasn't like some kind of crazy earnings when it forked up. Uh, people were pretty quick to switch over. And I know that this video is a couple days late, but I wanted to gather a little bit more information. And to be honest, uh, I was sick this weekend. You may even notice I kind of sound nasally. If you're wondering what CPUs are the best for random X mining or what your personal CPU that you may have that you know probably isn't likely that I showed in this video, Monero benchmarks.info, again, linked down below, is a great tool and resource. So most people know the 3900X is freaking awesome basically best cpu bang for buck that you can buy for mining uh random x here's the problem 
it's sold out, it's been sold out, and you can get price gouged, you know, pretty heavily on this CPU if, you know, you buy it from secondhand sellers, like for example, uh, $694 from Cakeboard LLC. But the bottom line is, this is a great resource and just, you know, pretty simple and super useful. And you can always do the thing that us nerds just always want to do. Who's the most powerful? And then you say, you know, I should buy a 7742 to just flex on Monero mining. But then you do this. You say you copy it and you put it into Google or whatever. And then you see the price. And then you rethink what you just thought and you realize maybe I don't need a 7742. That's pretty much what I did. Also, if you don't know, AMD has recently released their third gen Ryzen Threadrippers and they are freaking awesome. Okay, so awesome. They're sold out. It's a great time to be a seller of AMD CPUs because they are in high demand everywhere you go, everywhere you look. These things are monsters. I don't even know what they do on Random Max, but I'm sure they do it awesome. They're probably going to be up there with the, you know, the Epics, the, the Epic CPU I just showed you. Even though it's a lower price, you know, we're going to have latest gen in tech. And again, these things are freaking awesome. I want one. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much my collection of uh, how to mine Monero Random X and, you know, kind of everything I've learned and been compiling all this data here for you. The only other thing I don't think I covered in today's video was just your mining pool options. The easiest way to see that is mining pool stats dot, uh, dot, dot stream slash Monero. They bombard you with ads, kind of annoying, but they are a great resource for, you know, if you don't, if you're mining and you're not checking out their site periodically, you're probably missing out on just good, easy to access info. The bottom line is guys, is that Monero Random X is super cool, super interesting. It's always fun to see stuff like this. Unfortunately, it's really not all that profitable. And you're going to see, you know, big farms like data farms, like uh, server farms. They're going to, when, when you got server downtime, they're going to put them on Monero because that's making money. You got hardware sitting there idly. That's never a good thing as, as far as business is concerned. But, you know, say when they're not being utilized, that they can just kind of casually hash away on some Monero. And if it makes more money than the electric rate they have, which is probably incredibly low, then uh, that's going to be the right move. That kind of situation is what outclasses small at home miners. That kind of sucks. That's kind of the issue with CPU mining is while it's very cool and, you know, very you know, Bitcoin ethos centric from the one CPU, one vote that it all began with, when you really start to look into it and realize it, is that there are more CPU farms out there than you even imagine because data centers are basically CPU farms, whether they act like it now or in the future or whatever, they're, they're CPU farms. The situation is not what it was before. However, that doesn't mean that, you know, again, these things make more money than they burn, which means they are a good move. Uh, depending on building out a CPU mining farm in your basement, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. But if you do do it, that's super cool and I want to see it, um, especially in person because we've been touring some mining farms. So if you have a cool farm or any farm, really, please reach out to us. At the end of the day, again, this has been fun and interesting and exciting. I, I have been disappointed in the earnings, but hey, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. If crypto goes crazy, you know, mining with your CPU will be very much worth it yet again. But as always, time will tell, just like time told me that you should hit the thumbs up on this video, subscribe to the Vosco on YouTube channel, but that's thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like. I'll see you guys all next time. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be home.